I realized the only way I was going to grow and get out of that situation was to grow as a woman. And so therefore, I do forgive them. Mm -hmm. And I have moved on. And my press has changed. Mm -hmm. And it's because I'm not angry about it anymore. I'm not mad about it. And when you finally let something go, it goes. It's like taking a balloon and putting it up in the air. You know, and, and that's kind of where I'm 45 years old. You know, I'm not the little girl from American Pie. A lot of things have changed in my life. And uh, I wouldn't take back anything. I was looking up some of your projects and I didn't even know this until like a few minutes before I got on with you. You were just working with DMX recently. Yeah. Well, so, um, so that's a different movie. It's called Dog Man. Okay. And it's his last film, mm-hmm. which is really interesting because uh, he didn't get to finish the whole film, right? And so they actually did what they did with Paul Walker. And they make these, like, facial sculptures, and they put it on a face, and it looks exactly like him. It's crazy. Was it? What do you mean, like, CGI? They, no, they finished? Literally, it's like a like a face kind of they put on. And so the last couple of scenes that he has to film, uh, that will be what he's doing right now. It's it's incredible. Like it's, it looks so real. It looks just like him. That so the so last crazy. couple of scenes he's gonna film, I'll be in those scenes with him with the fake one. <laughs> oh my God. I mean, what's that gonna feel like for you to do that? I mean, I think everyone, uh, it was absolutely broken by the DMX. I mean, he wasn't just a great rapper, but he was a poet, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think he was one of the best rappers of our time. And it explains that in the movie. So I think this movie is going to have an impact on, I mean, the last person that really did that was Tupac, you know? Yeah. So I think that, uh, you know, let's see what happens with it. I, I think it will be a great film. I think he's a great actor. He's a voice in it and that mattered a lot to him. So uh, I think he'll be really happy of how this movie comes out and looks and, you know, um, I don't want to say anything that you don't know, but uh, yeah, knock on wood, (laughs) you know, but yeah, I think it's going to be really good. And um, I mean, DMX is DMX. So just to be a part of that history with them is just pretty much incredible. When he was on set, did he seem healthy? Did he seem happy? I never saw him on set. Okay. The movie started um, before I started working. So I was just due at the end of the movie. And then unfortunately, that's when he passed. So I actually never got to do the real scenes of him. Oh. The, the other scenes with the not real one. So that, okay. that's going to be really interesting. And we're shooting that down in Florida. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Well, I'll definitely look forward to seeing it. I'll let you down in the set. Um, so what three events in your life, if you had to narrow it down to three, shaped who you are today? Wow, that's a great question. Um, well, I guess one of them would be my parents making me. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. So right. congratulations on that one. Another one would be feeling the force of getting into Hollywood, like, which is the hardest thing to do, you know? What do you mean the force? What do you mean? It's so hard to make it in Hollywood mm-hmm. to begin with, but it's really, um, it's like winning the lottery ticket, really, mm-hmm. you know? And um, to be lucky and fortunate enough to, to get there it was incredible. And then seeing the after effects and everything like that. Mm-hmm. And then I guess the third one would be probably the most painful one was when my parents just passed. So okay. that gave me a whole different look and everything too. Did it make you think about, cause I know this happened to me when my grandfather passed when I was 32. The, the question that kept going through my mind was where did he go? And then it started me on this journey of looking into life after death and uh, the spirit and all of that kind of stuff. Did you go through anything like that at all? I mean, I would talk to that more with my sister about, mm-hmm. you know, those places that we go to, you know, but I think it was honestly the hardest part was like, no, it's okay. okay. was not being able uh, to call your parents up and ask, hey, how do I make this lasagna? You know, how do I make this? You know, there's so they were such good cooks. It was like so many things that I wish 
they wrote down the recipes or just just to call them on the phone like yeah yeah no, I can't call them you know are they there but I feel like I see signs a lot with yeah. them I really do I, I really feel that so I definitely feel their I feel their energy around me so okay that's very healing. For me. Yeah. And you have to stay open to that. You know, you, you, you can't try to explain it away. You have to stay open to receiving. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so what was your biggest takeaway from 2020? Wow. What a question. <laughs> COVID was something that, I mean, as you know, like we never expected something like this. It's like mm -hmm. the Black Plague or, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, in our lifetime, yeah. Never, like whoever thought and just how life's changed so much after mm -hmm. that. Not just from everyone staying home all the time, you know, and, and not being able to go out and, mm -hmm. and it was traveling, and, you know, all the, all the movies being canceled and everything and also being afraid of, even going out because you were afraid of people you yeah. know yeah. so it was just a lot of think fear that was going on with that mm -hmm. um being outside but when i was in my house i said you know what i'm gonna be proactive you know i'm not gonna sit here and just wait for COVID to come over like the, the industry is coming back you mm -hmm. know so in the meantime i started developing projects for myself going okay let's so let's produce this film. Let's do this one. Let's do that one. So I feel like we got in touch with a lot of amazing creative people and got to put a lot of like totally different products from comedy to drama to horror together. So we made a really good slate. That's And that's with your production company, correct? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. And that's with High Happy Films. Okay. And then um, I'm doing this one movie called Masha's Mushroom. Mm -hmm. And I think the director is called White Cross. She's also my partner on, on that particular film. And uh, she's absolutely brilliant, brilliant. And we decided to make this movie Masha's Mushroom. And that was like our, our real focus for us. And we just got connected with such valuable people, like from financing to distribution to all these different things and things that I learned that I never knew before. You know, I only kind of knew everything as an actress where I'd get the yeah. offer, I'd do the movie and kind of go away, you know. And then when I went on the other side, I realized, wow, it's really hard to make a film come together. Mm -hmm. So it gave me a completely different appreciation on the whole film business, but also how hard it is for the producers to get everyone together from right. the schedule, to the budgets, to just everything. So I think it really gave me a different outlook to be mm -hmm. on both sides of the camera, which was absolutely amazing for me and changing my life. So we, we kept doing that and uh, it, it, that really healed my time on what was going on because I was so busy, mm -hmm. you know? So I think a lot of people weren't that busy during that time. And I think, you know, a lot of depression went down and a lot of things happened. And so for me, in anything, I think in life, when you keep yourself busy and occupied, it's just healthier, you know? Absolutely. And um, are you a vegan? No, um, I'm very eco-friendly, but I'm not like a full vegan, you know? Um, okay. So yeah. So you're like me. I mean, like, do you need to have like a hamburger every now and then, or are you flip flop <laughs> back and forth? So I honestly, um, do you know the impossible burger? Yes. Do you like those? I'm obsessed with it. Two ones are the Impossible Burger, and there's another one. A lot of people get and it doesn't taste good, okay. but the Impossible Burger, you cannot taste the difference. I can't taste the difference. Okay, because I had the Beyond. It's no. disgusting. I tried it too, and I was okay. like, oh, this is yeah. But try okay. the Impossible one. You'll trust me. It's amazing. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I, but I don't like red meat that much at all. But yeah, well, I like to eat meat. You know, I tend to really eat. Uh, I love protein first of all, but I like um, fish and I cook a lot. So okay. it's, it's fun for me to, to, you know, we're here. I had a lot of time to learn how to cook different things. And mm -hmm. I have to admit, I a little bit, but I'm a pretty good cook. <laughs> <laughs> because I was told that you have a vegan handbag line or you're working on a vegan project. So tell me about that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so 
I can't say too much about it okay. because we haven't signed everything together, but it's uh, with a great handbag maker. Like his name is Michael Kulava. He's amazing. And a vegan handbag is, let's just say this, uh, it's not made out of leather. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it might be made out of vegetables. Believe it or not, you know it sounds crazy. <laughs> okay, so it's not like the typical pleather. No, no. Okay. It's mostly made out of fruit. Like, you'd be shocked how the making of it is. Okay. And then when I was going through all this as well, myself and my boyfriend, um, we went down to, have you ever been to Sedona, Arizona? No, I haven't. I went there because my father told me before he died, uh, he went there with his brother and mm-hmm. they had this like, it's very healing, like where the vortex is and it's, it's like very hippie and spiritual. Okay. So I went with him and we were supposed to stay like four days. We wound mm-hmm. up staying for four weeks and I got into like, I've always made bracelets and crystals and like, here's like one I can show you kind of, but they're all oh, like, cool. Okay. You know, just a bunch of stuff. But yeah. So, um, I bought all these incredible beads out of different energy and, and, and different rocks and started in charms that I put on for people. I, I've only made them pretty much for myself and my friends. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just fell in love with it. So I'm basically, you know, putting that part in a lot of the stuff I'm doing right now. Okay. Oh, very I can't cool. Set up now, otherwise I'm going to get in trouble for sure. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. It's totally fine. But you get it, right? I, I get it. I don't know about the vegetable and fruit thing, but I'll have to see. <laughs> it's pretty crazy, but I swear, like, I would show you a picture, but I definitely can't. But it, okay. it's, it looks the same. Like, I don't okay. mean how the process, how they did it, you know, but it's uh, it's pretty incredible. So there's going to be, it's not just us that's doing it. I mean, mm-hmm. I think Hermes is coming out with a mushroom bag. Uh, okay. Ours is a different one, but I think we're the only two that uh, are going to be the start of it. Okay. So that's going to be exciting. And we're going to have that next year. It will uh, come out on Fashion Week. Oh, very cool. Yeah. Okay. And then we'll have um, my touch of like, Arizona spiritual stuff on the back. <laughs> okay. Well, speaking of spiritual stuff, uh, do you pray? And if so, who or what do you pray to? Yes, I pray. Um, and who I pray to depends on what situation necessarily I'm in. Mm-hmm. You no, know, I mean I, I pray to Jesus, uh, okay. but I pray to my parents all the time. You know, mm-hmm. they're probably my number one. Okay. Um, I pray to my guardian angels. Um, I pray to different. Uh, if it's Saint Jude or Saint John or Saint Christopher, they have different meanings. What what you need so. I definitely have put a lot of that into my life, you know, okay. and I've done a lot of spiritual stuff with like listening to the tapes of it's helped me tremendously of Deepak Chopra. Mm. It's, I, I can't even explain like some of the things. It's like a 30 day thing that you have to do everything every night. Right. And it gives you, what do I not like? What do I like? Who am I close to? Who am I not? What do I want? What do I don't want? What do I take out? And you really have to write, like a, it's like a diary. And after you do it, like you should try it. Like my life started changing. Like that is so awesome. Positive energy. Yeah. And I think a lot of us don't know how to direct that positive energy. And I think he's someone that really knows how to give it to you. Mm-hmm. And I highly recommend to anyone. There's so many different stories, and you could just listen to it on tape before you go to bed. Wow. You know, it's incredible. And it really changed my life in a lot of ways. Okay. Yeah. I've interviewed him twice. And he was the first person I ever spoke to who told me that there was no such thing as time. And that totally tripped me out. And I remember when he said that, and at the time I was much younger and I didn't really get it. And he said, well, think about it. You know, if you're, if you're like in a mad rush and you're on a deadline, you feel like you're running out of time. If you're really bored, you feel like time is going so slowly. And he said, well, time is really nothing more than the movement of thought. And that's wow. something that I've been thinking about for a decade because it makes so much sense that we're kind of like trapped in space and time. And if you can step like out of it and be in the moment, you know, and kind of forget time for a moment, it's the most freeing, most beautiful feeling that there is. 
I agree with you a billion percent because time is like, okay, I'm running late for this meeting. They're going to go crazy from this, or I'm going this, or we have to get this. Wait, you know, it's like crazy, but you're like, wait, I don't have to run out to get the apples right now. <laughs> like, like can wait a half an hour. The world's not going to end. Like, yeah. So it just slows you down, like you said, and there's no reason that time should rush you. I mean, the only time t- time rushes you is like, say we're doing this meeting or whatever. Right. Problem. Then time matters. But yeah. when it comes to yourself, it's your own self and your own dreams that you you make yourself. It's when you put out a manifestation, you know, a, a, and something great out there, mm-hmm. it's going to come back. But you got to close a lot of doors to open up new ones. Yes. And that's one of the things that deep rock chopra does Mm -hmm. and i believe that's probably what you probably got out of it too and it's Mm -hmm. a great way of kind of like cleaning out the closet absolutely i'm gonna look into that um what was your favorite film role and why this is actually a really good story so last night i was with my boyfriend we were watching uh tv Mm -hmm. and the movie ended and we were just going through uh, hbo came up and uh all of a sudden, my boyfriend goes, oh, my God, this is crazy. You're on TV. And I looked at what movie it was, and it was Josie and the Pussycats. Okay. And that was that's always been my favorite movie I've ever done because it was, like, so much fun. Rachel Lee Cook is amazing. Rosario Dawson is amazing. And it was, like, a girl movie. And so we were shooting it up in Canada, mm-hmm. having fun. Like, it was just great. The whole movie was the best experience. I paid Melody. She was always happy. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a little, like, ditzy, but, like, she was kind of psychic. So it was like right. it was great waking up every day playing a happy girl. <laughs> you know, it wasn't That's like was cool. Yeah. The script. <laughs> it was like great. And what was your least favorite film role and why? You know, I, I can't really say that because I, I feel like every film role brings you to something else. Okay. There's more films that you, you, you could struggle more with the scripts or something like that. But mm-hmm. at the end of the day, I think everything that anyone goes through makes them who they are. I mean, if life was always so easy, it was so great, would you be so sensitive? Would you have that kindness in your heart? So yeah. to me, I think, you know, not just film roles, just life in general, that like you we have to go through everything, you know, to become the people that we are. Mm-hmm. And I think that's when, as you grow older, you start realizing that how important that is. This is true. Uh, have you forgiven the media for the way that they treated you years back? Or do you still struggle with that? Um, and that's a really good question. Um, I didn't. I was upset about it when I was younger. Mm-hmm. But I realized the only way I was going to grow and get out of that situation was to grow as a woman. And so therefore I do forgive them Mm -hmm. and I have moved on and my press has changed Mm -hmm. and it's because I'm not angry about it anymore. I'm not mad about it. And when you finally let something go, it goes. It's like taking a balloon and putting it up in the air and it's gone, you know? And, And that's kind of where I'm 45 years old you know, right. I'm not a child anymore. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not a little girl from American Pie. A lot of things have changed in my life. And uh, I wouldn't take back anything. Like, again, mm-hmm. it put me to where I'm at right now. I wouldn't be probably talking to you right this second if everything was different, you know? Right. And you, you're a positive person. I feel like you're, you're going a lot of through what I have. Yes. Uh, what you are going through. And I really can relate to you. So to me, would you change anything? I would not change anything. I really am at a place of peace in my life right now. I mean, there's been a lot of bumps in the roads and twists and turns, but no, I really wouldn't change. No, I would not change anything. And it sounds so cliche, right? When you say, oh, I wouldn't change anything. I mean, it too. Like, yeah, of course there's going to be bumps in the roads. Mm -hmm. Life. No one ever said it's going to be perfect. But if we didn't go through these bumps in the roads, it wouldn't define us as as who we are right now. Right. I find that like my compassion and empathy muscle has grown exponentially. But I also find that not just like us, but I think COVID really helped that. People really got to, they had no choice. They had to be inside. So Mm -hmm. what can you do? Call your best friends, call people that you haven't talked to in a while. You know, Mm -hmm. 
forgive yourself about a lot of things, you know, yes. and, and, and talk to yourself a lot, you know, and make sense of some of the things that, that didn't make sense. And, and I think that's kind of where I think you are and I am where I'm completely comfortable in my own skin right now. And I'm, I'm happy where my life is, is going. Has anyone ever apologized to you, whether it was like a gossip columnist or a tabloid reporter or, or anything like that? Have you ever been out and about and somebody said, you know, I'm really sorry that I wrote these things or I said these things or I treated you this way or, or anything like that? Um, to be honest, not really. Okay. <laughs> I can say yes, but... <laughs> That day, I can't wait. You'll be the first one I call. I'm like, guess who called me? But no, not yet. <laughs> is there is there a hobby or another profession that you would like to attempt at some point in your life? Um, I think I'm doing that really now. Um, okay. By not just being the actress, but by producing and, and creating my own films and dreams and the kind of roles that I've kind of wanted. But also, mm -hmm. I think it's been great because... You know, one of the things I love is, is like arts and crafts. I've been beading my whole life and I'm really into like rose quartz for love and this mm -hmm. and that. So every bracelet or everything I make with crystals has a huge meaning behind it. And I okay. make them with charms and, and give a story about it. So I feel like everything I'm doing, there's so many different kind of things. And they're also, I'm an artist. And I feel like I'm covering a lot of different areas in that. And I'm definitely satisfied with it. Okay. What do you think you came into this life as Tara Reed to learn? And what do you think you came here to teach? Great question. I think I came into this life to learn how to make people feel good. I think I have a gift of it just seems like everywhere I go, like all my friends, if there's something happening in their life, they talk to me and I talk mm -hmm. to them and I get them out of situations. And okay. what I'm here to learn is almost the opposite of that. I have to learn to be progressive, be humble, keep myself open to learn the information that I can help others and also help myself. Okay. Do you feel that there was a time in your life when you weren't as humble as you could have been and you look back on it and you're like, man, I should have been a little bit more humble, down to earth, appreciative, whatever. I that, yeah. I think that when I first got famous, I didn't really know what fame was. It's not something that's so easy. Okay. Like, you get right into it. So it's, it's a bit shocking. Okay. So I think like the beginning of my fame almost scared me kind of and then you know I realized how eventually to deal with it how people are like not everyone's gonna love you mm -hmm. you know social media can be terrible or you can not protect yourself on it you know so I think it was just a process of growing in life and I've been part of that process when you were on the American Pie set did all of you have a feeling like, wow, this is going to blow up? Like, this is going to make us? Or were you just like, oh, it's just a, it's a job and, you it know. It was definitely like, oh, this is just a job. Like, everyone was so new on it. Like, all the actors mostly were, you know, very green. It was the first movie for most of them. Mm -hmm. So we had a bond that that was really close. And when it blew up, we still have that bond. Every time we see each other, it's like the first people that you make it with that yeah. never goes away, you know? So right. I would say that. And then that was the one that we didn't know. And I think the one that we were most excited about that didn't do well was Josie and the Pussy Cats, which was our favorite. So okay. you never know. Like you so never yeah. know what's going to work and what's not. Okay. And is there a certain project that's coming out really soon that you want to talk about? Well, because it's COVID, we haven't, we're about to start shooting so many things right now. Okay. Like, you know, I have a lot of stuff on my plate. We're doing a really cool movie called Prophecy of Troy. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of like, a, it's kind of a game of Thrones, but not really, but it's really about Greek mythology, but it's all about the goddesses. So oh, that's really, cool. That to me is really exciting because okay. no one's ever made like a, a movie with like, just not the women, it was always the men. Mm -hmm. So this one is Women Empowered, 
And also Masha's Mushroom is something that is going to be amazing. And that's very women empowered. We have a women director, women producers, like, you know, everyone on it. And uh, that's exciting. And then we have diff- different ones. We have Mikey and Miguel. That's going to be a cartoon. It's coming mm-hmm. Family Guy. It's funny. And then what else do we have? We have so many things happening. Uh, we have Dogman happening. Uh, uh, Dogman, like the kids' books? No, Dogman is the DM. The oh, DM. Dogman. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And then, okay. of course, then I have side the movies, and we have the bag we're making with Michael Kaluva. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's going to be really cool. Trust me. I'll get you a bag once we make it. Okay. I'm going to send it and you're going to get it. Okay. You're going to be one of the first to get it. Okay, um, cool. Yeah. I mean, there's just a, you know, oh, we have Elderflower Lane and it's going to be a TV series. And that's a dark horror uh, movie, but with a twist of uh, the witchcraft in it, mm-hmm. which will be really interesting. And uh, that's going to be a lot of fun to make that one. So, yeah. I mean, there's just a, I could go on and on. There's so many things that, that okay. are happening now that it's just like, really exciting times i'm making another brand not just the purse one by myself but i still can't say much but okay i can give you a hint that it has a, a lot to do with the spirituality and crystals and stuff like that okay they're, they're super cool yeah so it's just like i'm just busy either rewriting stuff meeting with the writers finding the distribution finding the finance then I have the, my design stuff, you know, it's like then I have my acting stuff and it's just, it's been pretty amazing. So that's awesome. I'm so happy for you. That's so cool. Yeah. That's awesome. If you could travel back in time and alter a famous historical event, where would you go and what would you attempt to change? I wouldn't want to change anything, but if I was going to go back in time to an historical event, that's fun. I would have loved to have been Marilyn Monroe singing happy birthday to the president. <laughs> like you would have liked to, oh, you would have liked to be her singing happy birthday to the yeah. president? That's just such a legendary like moment. Like it was amazing. That's interesting. So you would have wanted to like be in her skin while she's doing yeah. it looking. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. That's a cool one. Okay. <laughs> Do you want to be a mom at some point in your life or are you good as you are? Well, I feel like I'm a mom already. I, I don't know if you have any dogs, but I do. I have two dogs that I'm so attached to in my life. So, in a certain way, I take them everywhere I go. Okay. I take them every vacation, like they go everywhere. Like if I'm shooting a movie or if I'm going anywhere. I mean, these dogs have probably been in like eight different countries. <laughs> you know? Oh. Yeah. Right now, that's where I'm at. Um, will I have kids? Let's see what uh, is in store for me. It's not a no. It's not a yes. I have got my eggs frozen, so oh, definitely, okay. there's definitely potential to that. But, okay. you know, like you said, like, time is no essence. Mm-hmm. If it's meant to be in time, it will happen. If not, I'm very comfortable where I'm at right now, too. Okay, but you got, that's so cool that you got your eggs frozen because I have a son and I'm 46, so I'm a year older than you. And I'm like, man, like, why didn't I do that when I was 30? It just didn't even occur to me. No, it's hard. I didn't do it when I was 30. I did it like uh, a year ago. And it's not easy to do it. And like, that's cool. You can do that. You could do that at 44. Yeah, you still can, but you're not going to get a lot. You know what I mean? You're lucky if you get any. <laughs> but okay. It's worth, if you really want some, or maybe it's just worth the try. Okay. And if it works, it doesn't, you know? Yeah, you know what? If it doesn't work, then it doesn't. So at least I know I have that option that I tried. Okay. So let's see. We'll see All in right. a couple years. So where do you see yourself in like five years? If you had um, to visualize it. I probably see myself living in Florida where you do. <laughs> I definitely see myself being in a place where I'm excited and happy about as producing and as acting, I mm-hmm. feel like it's, it's really hitting, you know, it's really working and <laughs> maybe married. Okay. You know, okay. Married. Just to be, you know, I have great friends around just to kind of keep my friends close. Not that I don't have many friends, just mm-hmm. the ones that are my favorite and the best and we would do anything for each other. That's, that's all you need. Yeah. That's need. Yeah. So I just see myself, going on the role that I'm on right now is just keep you know keep being content and happy with myself happy with my own skin mm-hmm. I have a great boyfriend I have amazing dogs I have good friends I think we're gonna move you okay. know 
hopefully we can start traveling a lot again because it's one of my favorite things. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I kind of just see myself moving along like the, you know, the train. I think I can. I think I can. I think yeah. I can. Like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? You seem happy, which is the most important thing. Like to me, that's what I learned over last year. You know, I was like, you know, just to wrap it up when I had nothing that I could do. And the only thing that I could do other than go to the supermarket was literally just walk around my community, like Groundhog's Day. Yeah. I started to pay attention to things I never paid attention to before. Like I'd be like, oh, what a beautiful tree or look at the bird or look at the, the cloud formation in the sky. And, <laughs> and you look at clouds all the time. All the time. I'm like, that looks like a mouse. That one looks like this, you know, <laughs> Yeah. But what I realized is that I think it was John Lennon who said that when he was a kid and he he was in school, the teacher told everyone to write down on a piece of paper what they wanted to be when they grew up. And he wrote, I want to be happy. And the teacher said to him, well, you don't understand the question. And he said to the teacher, well, you don't understand life. Wow. Uh, Yeah. Right. And that totally clicked with me. I'm like, you know what? Like if you're happy and you're healthy, you have it all. Like you have it made. You know, it's so funny. My company is called High Happy Films. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, I totally get your story. Yeah, that's so awesome. Well, Tara, it was so awesome speaking to you. Thank you for the interview. Absolutely. Yeah. You're so kind, so sweet. I'll do an interview anytime. And if you go to Florida, I'm looking you up for sure. I've known you forever already. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to follow you on Instagram in a minute, okay? All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. Of course. Thank you. Have a good one.